Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer and welcome to your 17th Microsoft C Sharp tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about nested loops. Now in this particular tutorial, we're going to be nesting for loops. Now you can also nest while loops, new while loops, um, and you can nest a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and get rid of what we had in the last tutorial. Leaving us with just our main function and our console.readline which will basically pause the program at the end of the program uh, because it waits for you to press enter and then it exits or it goes on to the next line and since there's nothing after this it'll exit. So let's go ahead and create a simple for loop. So we'll start off with the keyword for and we'll declare a variable. So we'll call it a and we'll set it equal to zero and let's do this as long as a is less than let's say 10 and each time we go through let's just a plus plus um, and add one to a each time so now that we're inside of this for loop we can create another for loop so to do this we're just going to use the same syntax as we did before so we're going to do for int and we need to use a different um, variable instead of a now because we declared a in the arguments of this for loop a can be used anywhere inside this for loop, but not anywhere outside of it. And because we're creating this for loop, this um, inner for loop inside of it, we cannot create a new variable named A because it'll start um, crying about it. Let's see if I can find the error here. It says, a local variable named A cannot be declared in this scope because it would give a different meaning to A. Because A um, is already defined in a uh, parent scope. Now, the parent scope is basically this for loop. Um, because this for loop is inside of this one it's known as the parent so let's just call it B and I'll set it equal to 0 and we'll do it as long as B is less than 10 just like we did with the previous loop and we'll add 1 to B each time so what do we want to do inside this for loop well let's just type console dot right line and let's give our number values so you guys can actually see what's going on inside of this uh, nested loop so we'll just type a equals and then we'll add a and then we will say b equals and we'll add b. So go ahead, try and guess what this is going to do and if you think you figured it out, um, well pause it, try to guess what it can do and if you think you figured it out, go ahead and play the video and see if you are right. So let's go ahead and run this and let me scroll up here so you can see here we have a whole bunch of code well not code output so when the outer loop runs for the first time which is this loop right here it's gonna say a is equal to zero so the first time it's running a is equal to zero here then it's gonna do this operation ten times then it's gonna come back up here a is going to be equal to 1, it's going to do this operation 10 more times. Now you can see this in our output. So A is equal to 0 and it goes B counts from 0 to 9 because this runs 10 times inside of this loop. So for every time this loop runs once, this one's going to run as many times as we set it to, which is in fact 10. So the first time it goes through, this runs 10 times, goes back up to the top, a is equal to 1 this time and it starts B over at the beginning because we redeclared B each time and set it equal to 0. So when A is equal to 1, B will go all the way from 0 to 9 and then 2, B will go from 0 to 9, 3, B goes from 0 to 9 and that goes all the way up to 9 um, to create, um, to finish the loop with A equals 9 and B equals 9. Now you've seen we got a lot of output here from just two nested loops now one time I made a I think I've already told you this guys but I made a uh, program with um, 26 nested for loops and if they really add on each time you go through it would have taken like 34 sextillion years just to solve um, a, an encrypted uh, message so I was gonna think of a way to make it more efficient but I realized that it was kind of stupid to do that because we were already moving on to the next thing in my class at school. So I'll go ahead and close out of this. And uh, this can be kind of confusing at first. So if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll try and reply. Um, and if not, 
go ahead and practice this a couple times. Do it with a do loops. Do it with your do whiles. Or same thing. Uh, do it with your while loops. Um, and add stuff inside. You can add an if statement in here. Whatever you want. Just make sure you've got this nailed down. And once you do that, go ahead and move on to the next tutorial. And don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe.